Now we want to talk about bank reconciliations, focusing primarily on some items which I believe are misconceptions around bank reconciliations, misconceptions which may stem from the way the software kind of helps us to do the bank reconciliation process, as well as the use of bank feeds, which can kind of complicate the way we think of how the bank reconciliation process works. So the first thing I want to point out is that the bank reconciliation process is a huge internal control. In other words, it's a huge check against us making data input errors. The first check that we have against making data put input errors is the double entry accounting system itself. The fact that you're putting data into the QuickBooks system and the QuickBooks system is forcing assets to equal liabilities plus equity. The fact that QuickBooks will not let you put something generally into the system, which will throw it out of balance, means that you have an, a huge internal control over somebody that's just doing their books by hand, just writing it out, for example, or doing it in uh, Excel without a double entry accounting system. So just using accounting software like QuickBooks, which forces that to take place, is a huge internal control, even though many times when new users are using a QuickBooks accounting system, it becomes tedious because they're like, why won't QuickBooks do what I want it to do? Oftentimes it's because QuickBooks is trying not to let you do something that will put it out of balance. And so that's huge. The second huge internal control is the bank reconciliation uh, process. So reconciling the, the cash account is a huge internal control. It's something that large companies should do. It's something that small companies should do. Now, the way you do it might differ depending on how you have the bank feeds set up and what type of industry you are in. It could be an easier or more difficult process, but every company should have some uh, verification process of the cash. And that's not only just because we're trying to verify cash itself, we're not trying to just verify the balance of cash at any given time. Cash is important. We want to make sure it's not, it's very liquid. No one's stealing it and stuff like that. But we're trying to verify all the transactions in cash. And given the fact that cash is involved in every accounting cycle, that will give us verification on the, on many other sides of the, of the transactions as well. So it gives us a double check on the entire double entry accounting system to a large degree. So for example, if I'm a, if I'm an accountant, and I'm doing taxes or I'm, or I'm trying to verify whether some, some set of books is accurate or not. If someone just gives me a handwritten ledger, I'm, I'm quite dubious as to whether that, and it's, there's no double entry accounting system that just give me like an income statement or something like that. I, I have very little faith that that's going to be a, a completely accurate statement because it's, it's, there's no double entry accounting system that's even helping it to, to stay in balance. If they did it by hand and used a double entry accounting system, which is very rare these days for someone to do, I'd have a little bit more assurance. If they put it into QuickBooks, I have a way more assurance, but I'm still gonna be skeptical that they didn't input all the data or something like that. If they put it into QuickBooks and do the bank reconciliations and they haven't fudged the bank reconciliations, which we'll talk later in terms of like forcing an entry into the bank reconciliation, then I have a much, much higher degree of assurance, even if it's a small business and not like a professional CPA firm, it's way bit, it's way bigger assurance than, than, than if you just did it by hand. So that would be the general kind of idea or thought process of it.